going to be an interesting day. Let's see if the spice can hold the 200 or the weekly 40. Right here. What are the Q's doing? Q's undercut. Oh, Q's already undercut. Okay. All signals, all signals indicate rougher days ahead. Maybe, or just affected by recency bias. Yeah, we need a little bit of a panic. Interesting. Energy is weak today. Energy and commodities are showing relative weakness today. So now we are... <clears throat> Let's see if we get a scenario like yesterday. We rally up into the declining moving averages and then roll over again. That rollover yesterday was pretty epic. Holy shit. Will you get out of LAC if it loses that 2542 point? No, because I don't use any stops. I buy and hold. Diamond hands, baby. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm holding AMC. It's just it's not in this list. It would be so good if you could have another leg down in this correction without any significant bounce first. Just get it over with. Get the spice down to 400 or something. To the 20 monthly or undercut to the 20 monthly or even better to the 50 monthly the faster the better llnw yeah i had a setup two days ago it was a good setup world of warcraft stream i haven't played world of warcraft in a long time okay that's a lie less than a year ago but still right now nothing Right now, the only video game I play is the stock market. Yeah, ARK is showing relative strength. <laughs> IGV2. IGV is also showing relative strength. This is the one that led the, uh, led the on the way down. But now a lot of these stocks that led on the way down are kind of showing relative strength. I don't know what it means, but it just means that right now they're showing relative strength. Doesn't really tell you much else. How did you push through the feeling burnt out on studying setups? I don't know, do something else with your life. In the meantime, take a break from studying setups. Take a break from trading if you need to. Anything to stop getting burnt out. <clears throat> yeah, the average ARK investor is down. Oh yeah, since inception, absolutely. Because most of the ARK investors, they came in around this area. That's how it always works with these um, popular funds and ETFs. And also, didn't like the which ETF was it? Um, was it the Qs? Some of these major ETFs had some record inflows, like just near the top a few months ago. I don't remember which one it was. Man, I regret I'm not long UVXY. <laughs> I was long it a few times here in the shop. But now that it went, I'm not long. Fuck. What kind of setups am I looking for in this type of a market? The type that doesn't put me to sleep. There are no setups. There could be some mean version setups. Um, but I, 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 don't, I don't know. At this point, I just wish the market goes straight down. Get some real panic. And get a, get a real bounce. The real tradable bounce. At this point, it's just been grinding lower. I don't really trust any bounces here. Yeah, I mean, all the, beat, the most beaten down sectors are showing relative strength. Biotech, software, shit goes. UVXY relative strength compared to spies. Uh, maybe. Actually, yeah. UVXY had is showing relative strength compared to the spies. That's true. I think what he meant is that... <clears throat> Like, for example, if you look at the SPY, SPY didn't take out the lows yet, while UVXY took out the highs. Means premium is building into this thing. Not funny. Coinbase, you know, you would think this thing would have an insane valuation. PE of 18. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> First, it actually has a PE, and two, it's 18. Yeah, that's true. Coinbase will have, yeah, Coinbase is very cyclical. It ebb and <coughs> ebbs and flows with the crypto market. That's true. Yeah, but they make more money, obviously, in a crypto boom. 
when people lose interest, they make less money. But yeah, they have lots of ways to monetize. Monetize it. This bear market. Uh, I don't know if it's a bear market. Yeah, some sectors are definitely in a bear market. But, uh, you know, <coughs> I, I, this is not a bear market. Like, it's not. <laughs> not. Not yet. But yeah, obviously, like, well, it depends how you look at it. It depends. A significant portion portion of the markets or, or of all stocks are in a bear market, actually, yeah. It's just the big indices are holding up really well and masking it. But if you look at the Russell, you know, this thing is almost in bear market territory. But this is just, I mean, this has only, you know, it's been, la it's been like been two months. It's, it's nothing like it's nothing really. Bear markets can be, you know, years, years. You get the legs down and they get these multi-month bear market rallies and then that stalls out. You get some chop and then it rolls over again. Study the, you know, the, the markets from like, say, mid-2000 to early 2003 or mid-2007 to early 2009. You'll see this, you know, we've been going on for two months. It's nothing. Now they're finally coming in for the... For FCX, they're coming for FCX. This thing has been going up during this past month, but they're finally selling that one too. Yeah, <laughs> my, all my scans are empty except for the ETF scan. Kind of funny. You don't often see this. Just literally all my scans, but one is empty. It's very rare to see that. <laughs> Super rare. Yeah, Peloton, man. <laughs> They couldn't get enough of it on the way up, and now we can't get enough on it on the way down. They can't get rid of it fast enough uh, on the way down. Same thing with Zoom. You can see these, like the stages, right? If you use stage analysis, you have the stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. It's so, it's so clear, like same thing here. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. What if I told you so I'm going to tell you a little secret. What if I told you you can design a trading strategy around that concept? But don't 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 tell you anyone outside of this community. We don't want the world to know. <laughs> Stan Weinstein has entered the chat. That one made me laugh. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Buy LAC. I've been holding this LAC for over three months. Damn, I really thought it was going to go to 100. But the market sell-off kind of ruined that uh, thesis. Oh, well. It was like uh, less than 1% of my overall portfolio. Tiny position. It's easier to be patient with tiny positions. It's very hard hold big positions that, uh, you know, kind of start pulling back. I have much tighter stops. How much was my overall gain? Oh, 11% after holding it for three months. Yay! On the next Warren Buffett. Actually, 11% in three months? That's actually a pretty good annualized number. It's actually not bad. That's like over 40% annualized. I take it back. Also remember, the big opportunities are always after uh, sell-offs. That's when the big uh, opportunities on the long side come. So the the more the deeper we go, the faster we keep going lower, the better. Like ideal scenario would really be some kind of a waterfall decline where we just go down another two three days in a row and just with accelerated selling. That would be that would be so good. Get UVXY to 20 or 30 or something. That would set up a nice tradable bounce opportunity eventually. Maybe next week. <clears throat> oh, look at this RKF from the bear flag breakdown. Man. Why couldn't I stay short RK? Why? I covered it after a few days. Like an idiot. And Palantir too. That was my biggest mistake so far this year. Covering those, the Palantir and Arc K shorts without any real reason. 
I don't know why. I just felt like it. I traded on a feeling. Yeah, this is why sell rules are so important. Same thing on MU2. I sold it on this day here, close below the 20. Now look at it, right? 42. I sold I sold it on this day here. It kind of closed right on the 20, uh, but I still sold it. I just didn't get a good feeling from the market. And now it's just straight down since. Selling rules are so important.